All right, I'm starting to see some people showing up. Thank you so much to everyone who is here. We're gonna wait a little bit longer for more people to go ahead and join this. Just make sure that we have everyone. So just thanks for your patience as we wait for more people to show up. Um, you're also free to start using the chat function um, to go ahead and introduce yourself if you want so that we know that's working. You can also, you have access to this throughout the whole tour uh, to type in any questions and things. When you do that, make sure it's set to all panelists and attendees so that everyone can see your question also. Um, we're going to wait for any last people to show up. Um, and so this will last about 60 minutes or so, and we're going to try and give you some more insight into what it's like to live on campus at Western. And we'll look at some residence halls and also go over some of the details of the application process and other things that are important topics related to that. So I think that's been long enough. I'm gonna go ahead and start by introducing myself. So my name is Spencer. I'm a third year student here at Western and I'm originally from Portland, Oregon. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I'm a linguistics and Spanish major, as well as I'm also part of the honors program. So I'm getting an honors interdisciplinary studies minor. Um, when I'm not focusing on one of those things or being a tour guide, I'm also working as a research assistant with two of my professors in seeing how early phonological intervention helps uh, reduce production errors in second language acquisition. I also really like climbing, so you'll find me at the rec center once that's open again, or just in the area around Bellingham, along Chuck and Drive, just finding cool places to go and get on rocks and things. I'm gonna pass it over to Elizabeth to introduce herself. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Elizabeth. I am a transfer student from Columbia Basin College, which is in Pasco, Washington. Um, so Tri-Cities, Washington. Um, I am majoring in elementary education and minoring in education and social justice. So all about education while my time here at Western, which I've been enjoying so much. Um, when I'm not studying or working, I'm either going to be in the MCC, which is our multicultural center on campus um, and just hanging out with friends, or I'm gonna be hanging around in downtown Bellingham, getting to know a little bit more of the vintage and thrift shops we have around here. I've found some amazing ones, um, or just honestly hanging out at home, kind of re-energizing, watching some Netflix to de-stress or anything like that. So pretty low key, that's a little bit about me and I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Chaya. Hi everybody tuning in. Um, my name is Chaya. I am a fourth year student at Western. I am majoring in environmental science with an emphasis on the marine sciences and I'm also pursuing a Salish Sea minor. In my free time, just like Spencer, I love going up to Chuckanut. Great place to go. There's so many different trails and you can always find a new one every time you go. Other than that, I'm kind of a homebody. I enjoy staying at home and I will be answering your questions about housing today and assisting the other panelists. All right, hi everybody. My name is Madison gonzalez Besh, and I'm a fourth year here at Western. Um, I am studying graphic design and I'm also getting my illustrator certificate. Um, when I'm not working at the Office of Admissions or, you know, studying as a student, I'm usually off running in the Sea Home Arboretum or checking out any other of the beautiful nature areas that we have here in Bellingham. I really love going to uh, the local Pickford Theater uh, in downtown Bellingham with friends. Sometimes they'll even put on student nights and they usually sell out and there'll be like raffles and prizes and it's always a good time. Or exploring any of the cute uh, bookstores that we have in the Fairhaven District as well as the downtown town area. Um, but before we get started, I would like to start this virtual uh, housing tour by acknowledging that Western does sit on the ancestral homelands of the Coast Salish peoples who have lived in the Salish Sea Basin, the North Cascade Watershed, and the San Juan Islands since time immemorial. And as representatives of Western, we express our deepest gratitude and respect for our, to our Indigenous neighbors, uh, specifically the Lummi Nation and Nooksack Tribe for their enduring care of our shared land and waterways. So thank you all so much for being here and I'm going to hand it off to Spencer. All right, thank you. So as you can see here with, um, oh, um, that was a picture of our, uh, kind of a map of our campus showing the three main residential areas we have on campus. We're gonna be kind of talking about different ones, so I'm mainly gonna talk about North Campus. And while I'm talking, you'll be seeing kind of a photo montage of 
some of the different buildings and things in that area. So to start with that, um, oh, you also can find more about that in our you visit tour online after this, if you wish. So we'll go ahead and start that. Um, so North Campus has five residence halls. It has Edens, Edens North, Higginson, Mathis, and Nash. And for all of our residence halls, there's kind of two different styles that the rooms can be. So we have our suite style rooms and our hall style rooms, where suite style is one that is you have your room and it's connected to another room through a shared bathroom, whereas hall style is maybe more what you've seen in traditional college movies and things like that, where you have one hallway with a bunch of rooms on it that then have a shared bathroom. So kind of thinking about the things that you would prefer there with each of those. Um, the suite style one is potentially a little bit more private for the bathroom, whereas the hall style one, you might run into somebody and meet a friend while brushing your teeth. Um, I lived in a suite style and really liked that. It fit really well for me. And I didn't really feel like I missed out on any social opportunities because of it. One reason for this being that there are lots of hall events and things that are put on. And so these are put on by your RAs and hall council. RAs are resident advisors. You'll hear a little bit more about them a little bit later on. The hall council is kind of your opportunity as a student living in a residence hall to get involved uh, with the decisions and planning and those kinds of things that are going on. So I know a number of people that are now in the, our student government that did that and really liked that. And so if you have those kinds of interests, definitely get involved with that. Or if you just want to have a little bit more say in what goes on. Um, so they put on a lot of different like events. One of my personal favorites that they do at Eden's is a haunted house every October. Uh, I don't know if they're doing it this year, but every normal year they do this. And actually my freshman year when I was living in Eden's, I got to be a plant. So I would go in and I'd join a group that was going through the haunted house. And then like halfway through, I'd be dragged away by a clown screaming in terror and all that. So there's a lot of fun things like that that are put on by the hall councils and things like that and really cool ways to get involved if you're interested in that. I also want to mention that the other thing that differentiates our room types is the number of people you have. So kind of our standard is a double room, just you and one roommate but there's also a chance that you would be placed in a triple room, which means you would have two roommates. Um, you also, if you are looking for that, could specifically request a triple room. And if you want a little bit more privacy, you can also request a single room. This is also one of the things that we kind of try and hold, reserve for gender neutral and gender inclusive housing options. It's also worth being aware that a triple room would cost a little bit less and a single room would cost a little bit more just because of the number of people that you're gonna have splitting that cost. So in just a minute, we're gonna take a look inside Edens, which is where I lived. And I wanna share one of my favorite, just like little fun facts really quick about Edens. And you'll see it very soon, but the windows actually were are historical. And so when they remodeled the inside of Edens to make it into a residence hall, they had to preserve the windows and that made their shaping of the rooms kind of funky. So all the rooms are slightly different shapes. They're all about the same size, but a bunch of them have these little like nooks and things that are great for putting a bed or a desk in. Um, and we'll see that in just a minute. And then we go ahead and look at Eden's. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and turn to that now to go to the tour through there. So this, this is Eden's. Uh, um, and you can see this is kind of what a standard, this is a hall style room, and that is what the rooms are like in the, in Edens North, Mathis, and Nash, whereas this, you can see one of those little cutouts that I mentioned. Um, this is one of the suite style rooms in Edens. You can see it comes with a bed, a desk, a dresser, um, and then, and that's going to be the door to your hallway, and then there's also going to be another door in here somewhere. Actually, this, oh yeah, there it is. So then that door would lead to the bathroom that would then connect to the other room of the suite. In some of the other buildings that you might have as many as four rooms connected to a bathroom, but no more than that for a suite style. And this is just kind of another example of a suite style room, um, this one in Higginson. They also all of the residence halls have lounges. And so we have a picture of one of the Eden's lounges somewhere in here. Um, 
and, and this is a great spot to just hang out and do your homework or things like that, as well as it's also where we have up more hall events and things like that. So my freshman year, we had a winter, every, in, in winter, we had a weekly cookies, cocoa, and conversation where you could go to the lounge and hang out and there'd be cookies and uh, hot chocolate provided and you could just chat with people in your, in your residence hall. That's about it for uh, North Campus. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off to Elizabeth to talk a little bit about the Ridge. Yeah, thanks. Um, so just a quick reminder, the chat is open for people to ask questions. And if you want to ask anything, we do have some chat moderators who are there to answer any questions, but also pass along questions to us towards the end of the tour when we have a Q&A. So yeah, but I'm gonna dive into the Ridgeway Complex. So. I lived in the Ridgeway Complex my first year coming up to Western. Um, I mentioned I was a transfer student. So while it was my third year in college, it was my first year um, at a university. So I chose to live on campus just because I wasn't super familiar with the area of being from the Eastern side of Washington. Um, and I just felt it was best to stay on campus as I got acclimated with like Bellingham life and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but the Ridgeway Complex is kind of situated right behind the, um, Wade King Recreation Center, and it's also sort of up on a hill. So there's this kind of thing that we call the Ridgeway Calves. So if you live in the Ridgeway, um, which we call the Ridge, by the way, um, you likely were gonna get some killer calves out of it, which is pretty nice. But I chose to live here. So Spencer kind of talked about the difference between suite style and hall style. Um, I like the privacy or the idea of the privacy that a suite style would offer me. And I found that the ones that I liked best after looking through all the different residence halls options online that I really liked the way the Ridgeway kind of buildings were set up, um, particularly Gamma. I really liked the way it was kind of, it almost kind of felt like an apartment style because your door led into the outside rather than into a hall or something like that. Um, so I just kind of found comfort in that privacy and then also having um, a bathroom and sharing that bathroom only with a certain amount of uh, girls. So that was really nice for me. Um, what I also really liked about the Ridge though was that it just kind of had a woodsy feel. So being from the eastern side of Washington there's kind of like we're in a desert climate out there so there was never a, like a lot of trees, a lot of little animals around. The Ridge however as you can see through the video there's a whole lot of trees and a whole lot of fun stuff to look at. The amount of times when I like came down my stairs from my suite to find like deer hanging out right down by the stairs, it scared me a lot of times, but it also was super nice to see. Um, so it just adds like that little cabin in the woods type uh, moment, which I personally really like. So that was kind of um, a big selling point for me and something that I ended up really liking once I got to the Ridgeway Gamma and took my life or wow, that came out very interesting. I spent my time there my first year at Western, um, but yeah, and the other fun things that kind of go on within the residence halls is that they all have RAs, which are resident advisors, and resident advisors serve several different purposes during your time on campus while you're living in the residence halls, um, and one of those is really just there to support you and provide resources for you in any kind of aspect you're looking for within your college life, so if you're just looking for where you can find the best pizza in Bellingham, they can probably get an answer for you. If you're looking for where you can find academic support, they'll have an answer for you that and they'll, they're able to direct you to where you need to go within all those resources that they have. Um, but they also do so much more. They, along with the Hall Council that Spencer also talked about, they work to put on different events on campus. So something about the Ridge that I also really enjoyed is that they have something called their um, Ridgeway Carnival, which is in the spring quarter. They usually host a little carnival with a whole bunch of different games. They have snacks like popcorn and ice cream and snow cones and things like that. And it's just really there sort of as like a last hurrah for everyone living on the Ridge, um, as well as just those living on campus or going to Western Washington. They're able to go up to the Ridgeway Complex and then just enjoy a quick little um, event, have some fun before you have to buckle down with finals and things like that. So that's something that RAs also put on. I know at the beginning when I first moved into the Ridge, um, they also had a scavenger hunt that they planned with the Hall Council. And basically what happened was every suite, um, we called them stacks on, in Gamma because there were stacks of them. Um, they each had a scavenger hunt group. So whoever got their list and completed all those tasks first, basically they were all taken to um, uh, an ice creamery we have in town called Mallard's and we got free ice cream out of it which is super fun 
but that's kind of how RAs work. Um, another big aspect of resident advisors is that they work with you and your roommate if any issues were to arise for any reason. Um, but speaking of roommates, there's a few different ways for you to find a roommate or get a roommate. And I'm just gonna go over them briefly because we will talk about them at the end if that's something you all are wanting to learn more information about. But roommates, you either have a random roommate selection. So once you fill out your, um, on the housing portal, you'll get like a survey about what kind of roommate you would be. So like what time do you sleep and all those kind of questions. And then you're paired up with someone who's the most like your lifestyle. Um, we do have a mutual request, so that is how I got my roommate. I happened to know someone who was already coming up to Western and wanted to live on campus, and we just put our um, student ID numbers onto the housing portal, and we were just matched up that way. We also do have a roommate.com, so this is more of a website. Um, they just, you put your picture up, put some information about yourself and get to know people, and then you can find a roommate that way. Or lastly, we do have an international um, program. So we have a sister school in Tokyo, Japan, and we have students that are coming from Tokyo to go to school for a semester here um, at Western. So the only downside to that is that they are going to be leaving halfway through the year because they do run in a semester schedule. But if you look at it from a positive perspective, then that just means you get to know two people from Tokyo. Um, and then later you might have connections to those people in Tokyo. So I think that's a super fun um, experience that if you're open to, you can definitely sign up for. Um, but that's kind of a little bit about my experience living on the Ridge and a little bit of experience about that. But we are going to take a look into the Ridgeway um, housing and residence halls. So in a moment, you'll see some pictures of some of those rooms. So here you can see one of those rooms. Like Spencer mentioned, doubles is kind of the normal across campus. So that's what a lot of these images show. But we have those things like the desks, the beds, the wardrobes. Um, and that's going to be the door leading out into the hallway because this is going to be a hall style room. We do have some rooms that are going to be um, suite style and you'll able to see those because instead of a wardrobe, you are going to have a closet space because through that closet, you will find the door to your suite, your shared suite bathroom. Um, so that's pretty, pretty neat. So that door there leads you to the outside. That's kind of what I was talking about. This is the closet space um, and through those doors, you can see it kind of leads into a space where that is going to be the bathroom. So yeah, that's kind of some other fun stuff about the Ridgeway complex. Another cool feature of the Ridge actually is that it has heated floors. So um, during the winter when it gets really cold or whatever, you can kind of turn on those heaters and your floors will be heated. Um, I had a friend who said she would lay on her like carpet or her rug and then just lay there because it was so warm like on her body. So if that's something you're interested, definitely look into that. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Maddie to talk about her South Campus experience. Yeah, so um, I lived in the Fairhaven Residence Hall, which is one of the three residence halls of South Campus. Uh, that includes uh, Buchanan Towers, Burnham Woods, and of course, uh, Fairhaven. And I chose to live in Fairhaven because it was one of the smaller residences. And I had a really cozy, intimate atmosphere. Um, there are 12 buildings, or like we like to call, say, uh, stacks that kind of circle around a communal pond and gazebo. And it was just so cute, kind of looked like its own little miniature town. Um, I also love that it, you know, there was some distance between me and my on-campus classes, because um, it's not the furthest uh, residence hall away from main campus, but it still has a little bit of distance and it kind of just established for me that, um, uh, that kind of separation of like school, like work and school and then like home. Um, so, but if you know, you might want to live on North Campus if you like to sleep in at the very last minute before you run to classes. I totally get that as well. Um, what I liked most about Fairhaven was that it was really close to the gym and the Sea Home Arboretum, um, which is a large forested hill that sits right behind uh, Western campus with trails going everywhere. It's super beautiful. Um, so on good weeks, uh, I would wake up really early in the morning and I would go on trail runs in the Arboretum or I would go and do weight training in the gym. Um, at 6 and 7 a.m. there's not a lot of people at the gym so I could use all the equipment I wanted and not have to wait which was really really nice. Um, it was also very close to the South Campus Dining Hall which happens to be in uh, the Fairhaven Commons so literally the dining hall is just right there. Um, there's also a preschool in uh, the Fairhaven uh, residence halls um, and it's been there I believe since Fairhaven um, was established but it was always like very cathartic 
to see little kids like playing um, on the playground or like, you know, riding their bikes with their big helmets while I was, you know, stressing for a test or an exam and I got to kind of see them doing their thing. That was always really nice. So I love that. Um, there's not, I, I had a really great experience in the dormitories. And so um, I didn't have too many challenges. Um, something I will say, I mean, I would say the layout's a little outdated. Um, I think it was made in the 70s. Um, so it was kind of like being at summer camp for a year, but like um, a year in the residence halls, just one year as a first year was absolutely perfect for me. And then I went on to moving um, in an apartment with some friends that I met through, um, through Fairhaven in the Fairhaven uh, residence halls. Um, and also, uh, I really wanted to create in my first year a really safe place uh, for students to kind of come together and dance because there's not a lot of uh, dancing venues that are open for 21 or for 21 and uh, younger. Um, so I really wanted to create that. And so I went to my resident advisor and she was totally up for the idea. Uh, she got me set up uh, to go and attend a council, a Fairhaven student council meeting. Um, and they loved my idea. They gave me the funds and they also gave me a reservation in the Fairhaven Commons to put on my event. I was able to rent some speakers from the ATUS desk, uh, the student technology desk, um, and make a really, really uh, fun time, uh, kind of force my friends to dance with me and you know, meet some new people. Um, but I was just so wowed by um, how my RA, um, her name was Sequoia, stepped in and she took me to go um, to uh, the store to go buy snacks and stuff when I didn't really know the area very well. So our resident advisors are really there for you to, you know, to create whatever you want and to help you with that. And um, so definitely depend on them when you do go to the residence halls. Um, I do want to talk about dining on campus um, and choosing a meal plan because if you do decide to live in the residence halls, you will be required to have a meal plan. Um, there are three dining halls on campus and each is associated with the three main living areas. Um, you are not restricted to any one of the dining halls. You know, if you're living in, on North Campus and all of your friends or a good portion of your friends happen to be living at the Ridge, you can definitely go and eat with them anytime you want. Um, you can also decide which meal plan is right for you based on your personal eating habits. Um, I personally went with the unlimited meal plan because I tend to eat a lot and I wanted to have full flexibility uh, with my school schedule to eat whatever I wanted without worrying if I'd have enough meals to last me throughout the quarter. Um, but if that's not a big concern for you, we also have meal plans that range from 125 meals per quarter, 100 meals per quarter, and 80 meals per quarter. Um, it's actually a good rule to start kind of low because you can always add meals to your meal plan, but you can't take any away, so you won't be refunded for any meals that you don't use. Um, as far as food, so important. Um, I actually really loved a lot of the dining hall options. Um, I am a pescatarian, and I was actually really impressed by how many great vegetarian um, and vegan options that the dining hall does provide. And we have a lot of rotating food entree stations, so I never really got tired of our options. Um, we would have things like uh, our comfort food station, which was like mac and cheese and um, or fried chicken. Uh, we would have our international food station that would provide things like pad thai or tacos, um, things like that. I really loved our salad bar. There was always really great fresh uh, greens provided by local farms. Um, I absolutely miss the waffle making station that was, you know, from a.m. to p.m. You can make a waffle at any time and uh, I, I miss that so much actually. <laughs> um, we also have like, you know, an ice cream station, things like that. Um, something I also really love is that um, by every single food item there will be a list um, or a little sign listing every single ingredient that is going into that food item. So if you have any dietary restrictions, um, you know, it's just going to be really available to you and you'll know exactly what is going on your plate. We also have um, allergy free zones for students with extreme allergies. Um, for them places to eat so they don't have to worry about, you know, a student sitting across from them and, you know, triggering some sort of allergic reaction based off of what they're eating. And then uh, when you do buy a meal plan, you will provide a certain amount of dining dollars uh, each quarter. And so this is really great if you find yourself getting bored of dining hall food. Um, you can use these dining dollars at any one of the eateries around campus. Um, my personal favorite is 
Zoe's Bagels. They have really great bagels and sandwiches. Uh, we have uh, Panda Express, uh, Subway. We have a little pizzeria. Um, you could use these dining, hall, dining dollars at grab and go markets where you can get, you know, pint sizes of Ben and Jerry's and all the study snacks you can think of. Um, super helpful. Uh, I, I didn't really understand the concept of dining dollars when I was a first year. So by the time that um, spring quarter rolled around, I had racked up like 600 some dining dollars in my account. And so the thing with dining dollars is that they roll over for, from every quarter, fall, winter to spring, but they stop after spring quarter. So they're not gonna roll over into your next academic year. So I had a quarter to use all of those dining dollars and I bought um, me, my, uh, my friends, and you know, even strangers, so much food. Um, I would always get the most expensive bagel at uh, Zoe's Bagels, which is the uh, cream cheese and salmon lock bagel, which is so good. Um, but definitely make sure to use those dining dollars because um, it's a great way to get make friends and also just have uh, eat delicious treats. Uh, but now we're gonna go and look and see uh, a Fairhaven dorm. Um, just show you all the interior a little bit. So you'll find that a lot of, a lot of the dormitories look um, pretty similar on the inside. A lot of the furniture looks very similar. Um, you know, of course, you're going to have a desk, uh, you're going to have your wardrobe, um, you can always bring in furniture if you want. I do think it is a, bit, a little bit tighter in the Fairhaven complex, but I actually loved how close I was to everybody on my floor. I made really great friends with a lot of people um, in the Fairhaven complex. And um, I loved being able to just, you know, when I was kind of tired of studying at like 10 p.m., I would go to one of the lounge areas and there was always like some sort of group, you know, either studying or talking and we would have, you know, talk late into the night about, you know, philosophical conversations to like, you know, really, really silly things, um, you know, argue about, uh, veganism or you know just things like that and I really kind of miss being so close to people um, but that is a little bit um, about Fairhaven so again if you have any questions please feel free to ask but right now I'm going to hand it over to Chaya. Hi everyone so I am going to go over the process for applying for housing um, what you see here is our housing timeline from our website. This will be very helpful as you're going through the steps of applying for housing and as you move through that until you start living with us on campus. So the first step, if we scroll down, you see the priority application period. You can see our dates of windows there. You're welcome to apply any time during that time. As long as you get it in, your application qualifies as within the priority application window. And then that is where once you apply, you'll be able to go in there and this is where you can indicate stuff as you need like a disability accommodation for the occupancy in your room. You can signal that you're interested in the AUAP International Roommate Program, which was spoken about earlier. You can indicate interest in gender neutral housing or pride housing, which we can add a link for our community, community areas. We can add that into our chat. And then the second part is actually going to be selecting a roommate. So when you're in the application, you're able to answer like your bedtime, what your interests are, you can write a bio about yourself. And when you go into something called a roommate manager within the My Housing portal, there'll be three ways. You can invite a roommate that you already know, which what Elizabeth said, like using your room number of your like application and then also your Western ID number to search that person. And there's also a section there where you can see like a ranking system. So you can see other roommates that match closely with your 10 questions that you answered in your application. That's another way. And then you can like do a random search. You can message people through the portal. So there's lots of different avenues to try to find a roommate. And the next portion is to get notice of your housing deposit. This is our indication to you that we have space to offer you on campus. And when you agree to pay that fee, that is your indication to us that you would like to indeed be on campus with us for the following academic term. And here you see the deadline as well and like the notification period above it. 
And then the fourth portion is actually going to be your room assignment. We could have a mixture of assigning students to a room or you will be picking your own room. So more information with, about that will always be posted here. All students will get communication through their student email. That's where you'll see all details about that. As you can see here, this is our current setup. So you can see through each quarter, we describe what the process is. So this is subject to change, but it will always be updated here. And we're gonna use the laws 15 to 20 minutes to answer any additional questions you guys might have about housing and how school will look like next year. All right, y'all, so you've just heard a whole lot of information about housing and dining and what all that entails. Um, so we have a good amount of time to just answer any questions y'all are wondering about or if you just, are wondering about anything else please let us know the chat feature is working and i know that our chat moderators have been working super hard to answer questions y'all have been asking but this is your time to ask anything that maybe pertains more specifically to maddie or to spencer or myself or chaya um, but please ask us all the questions you would like and then we can go from there I can answer the question here about disability accommodations. So we do keep single rooms on hold for students with disabilities. This is what I was referring to in the first part of the housing application. This is the space for you to indicate that you are in need of a disability accommodated room. We might not have a setup where it's like a private bathroom with one bedroom, but it's actually the occupancy of the room. So working with the Disability Access Center, which was linked in our chat earlier, as well as indicating that on your application is the initial steps to start that process for getting accommodation for a single room on campus. Did you all see the question, what would you say are some of your least favorite things about Western? Does someone wanna take this on? about living on Western, just generally speaking? Uh, I don't see the question. It just says a uh, least oh, favorite things. I think it's just general on I the shelf. I see it. Oh, um, least favorite things about Western. I don't know, I feel like, oh, sorry. I was just gonna say something for, it's like some things that I tend to not dislike, but just, kind of frustrate me sometimes. It's more like program specific. So it's not something that I like necessarily feel I have to share. Um, I, I don't know, I guess I'm, I'm pretty bad to answer this question. I don't know how to approach it. I, I've yet to find anything that I like dislike so much. I just feel like I need to get out. So I think that's a good sign. Um, yeah, I don't know if anyone else wants to answer that though. Yeah, Elizabeth, I would also agree with you. I think it's more specific to the person, just like you'd have in any situation where you go, there's pros and cons to everything. There's nothing to me as a student that stood out within my four years here that was significantly bad about Western as a whole. It would be something that in my situations and my courses, something that would apply just to me. So I think this is a great school for anybody that wants to come. And I know, and there's someone else what my accent is, British, but I'm Indian. So just as a side note. <laughs> there was also a question about what is what are some of your favorite things about Western? Um, and I can start by answering that my favorite, my all time favorite thing about Western is uh, the Western community. Um, I didn't, I had no expectations when I really came to Western and uh, there is, you can always find um, a bunch of different uh, groups to be a part of and it is a pretty tight knit community I would say. Um, you know, when we were having on campus classes, I couldn't get through campus walking on campus without seeing someone, um, a friend or someone that I knew from class without, you know, saying hello or seeing how they were doing and um, getting that kind of, uh, you know, interaction was just was so was so great for me. So that's definitely my favorite thing. You can always find a group to be a part of a club. Um, you can always find a friend who is looking for another friend. So yeah. 
Thanks, Maddie. And I, I do want to give us all a chance to answer that, but um, I do want to take a moment real quick to answer this other housing question that we got, um, just because you know we are in the housing um, tour. However, if you want to ask more general questions about Western, we do are also going to have a panel, panel available for you to ask all those questions. But again, we will get back to those favorite things. I just want to answer first the housing one. Um, so we got this question that says, if you're the first to select that room, do you get to choose who your roommate is? And does that apply to the honors dorm too, if you are selected for that program? So I'm going to answer based on how I'm interpreting the question. Um, if you are in the honors program, you're always going to have first dibs to the Eden's dorms. Um, you're always going to be made available. That's going to be made available to you first. Um, you don't have to live in the Eden's um, dorm if you don't want to, but it's there if you would like to. Um, as far as who your roommate is, again, that's going to kind of go back to your roommate selection. So if you go through like a random roommate, um, oh, sorry, we're getting an update on the question. Um, okay, so the whole question was, it is my understanding that you can select a specific room. Is that correct? And if so, are you the first to select that room? Can you choose your roommate? So. Let me process again. It is my understanding that you can select a specific room. So you can't necessarily like, I'm, I wanna live on, I don't know, floor five, room six or whatever. You can't really do that. Um, you can request like a double, triple or a single as Spencer talked about. Um, once you get that, depending on the roommate option that you would like to go with, that's where roommate will come in. So if you choose a random roommate, you can't necessarily like, pick which random room you want to live with because that's it kind of goes against the whole randomized aspect of it. If you would like to um, have a roommate that you already know, that's kind of going to go your mutual request option. Um, if you want to live with an international student, it's just going to go like that. So I guess, I don't know if I'm the best to answer the question. Maybe somebody else would like to talk about um, this instead, but. I can jump in a little bit to add on to what Elizabeth said. So Going over honors, like in Eden's Hole, you either have the option as a student in the honors program to live in Eden's Hole, or you can live in one of the other residence halls. Um, that is, as Elizabeth said, like first priority for students to live in Eden's Hole are students that are in the honors program. Um, your more general questions about room selection, um, students will get a like room selection time slot, which is a date and time to enter into room selection wherein you will see all rooms that match with your housing gender, male, female, neutral. And that is what the rooms that are available for you to select. Now, if you're in a roommate group, there will be a group leader, which you'll see more information about within your roommate manager portal. Your group leader will be able to put you and your roommate, and like if you had like three people in a group and your other roommate into a room based upon what's available. If you chose not to be in a roommate group, you will find your roommate out when you enter room selection because there would be another student, let's say in the bedroom or another couple, if you're in a suite style room and there's two bedrooms, there'll be two roommates in the other room. So that's how like the random process works. And you will be able to view like the responses off that random roommate, they're like roommate questions. You'll be able to view that inside before you select to add yourself to the room. So if you don't feel like that's a good fit, you can always change the room or not select into it. And you can always re-enter room selection to change your room if you decide that that's not a good fit. I don't know if anybody has any more further questions though, but I can elaborate on that if that wasn't clear in any way. Go ahead and just put that in the chat though. I don't think there, well, so far there hasn't been any update on like the roommate questions. However, we did have another question as to how do students access the dorms and are the main entrances secure? Uh, Maddie, do you wanna answer that? Yes, so uh, when you do get into the residence halls, you will be given a key. Please make sure, like it's um, imperative that you protect this key because I know it, it costs a lot to replace it if you do lose it. 
Um, but uh, you usually take this key and then you can enter whichever dormitory you're in and it can only be like the building that you're in um, often. And um, I know it works differently in some other places. So that's how it worked for me over in Fairhaven. Um, for other students, uh, they're gonna use their Western ID card, I know, um, and they get like, they can pass into, um, you know, their dormitory building, I believe. Um, and uh, usually uh, you're only allowed, like if a student doesn't have access to a building, you shouldn't let them in um, just in general. Uh, so that's, you know, really how we do monitor um, safety and how kind of students will be held accountable to not bring um, in people who usually aren't staying in that building. Um, there are times when you like, you'll want to bring your friends over. Um, and I don't know if there's a certain way, maybe Chaya or um, Spencer, uh, Elizabeth, you guys know uh, if there's a specific way that you go about that, but um, that's as much as I know about that. Yeah, in my experience it was pretty similar. We had a little key fob that you would hold up to a sensor right at the door and then that would only work for your um, residence hall and none of the others. And if I had a friend that was coming over, I would just have to go and let them in specifically since I already knew them, but it wouldn't just like let in a person that I didn't know if they were someone who lived there or not. I wouldn't let in a stranger, for instance. Yeah, I echo exactly what Maddie and Spencer said. That's correct. So if you have like guests coming over, and you're like walking in with them, that's completely fine. Just make sure with your roommates that they're okay with you having a guest over. That's a really important thing to go over. When you move in, you do have like a friendly kind of roommate agreement that you do with your suite mates and also with your roommates that is um, organized by your RAs. Um, you will have more information about that once you move in, but that's kind of like a written agreement you sign at the beginning, which is an open space to discuss how you'll feel about guests coming over, kitchen items, bathroom items, if that applies to you, free space for that. So that's the most thing is the rules of making sure that your roommates know someone's coming over. And then just making sure you don't have piggybacking, you don't have people trying to get into the building behind you who don't have keys. And kind of just promoting that you're trying to keep your community and the students in the building safe. So everybody needs to hold an active part in keeping the security of the area, and making sure you're just not letting people in who don't have keys. I did notice a question in the chat about if students want to live near where their like major department is. So spread across campus, we can link the campus map you might choose to arrange your building preferences close to where your major's department building is. It doesn't always work that you will find a residence hall that's close to it because some major departments are in the center of campus, which is why we aren't separating our residence hall based upon major. It's based upon other criteria. So feel free to pick any building you'd like and add that as your building whatever you enjoy and go ahead and check out the explore the buildings for more info about each building and what you like um i did notice we had another question and chai you might be better suited to answer this one too but someone's asking if they had a service dog with them um would they be putting them would they be putting the person and the service dog obviously in one room like a single or would they have the option to get a roommate um yeah i can answer that for sure so um having an animal in the residence halls if you don't have like a service animal it would be an esa which is an emotional support animal um if you have a disability accommodated single and then you have a service animal yes you would be by yourself in that room with your animal that is something that you would do via the DAC, Disability Access Center. Um, if you're going about trying to get an ESA on campus, that is also something that needs to be approved through the Disability Access Center. And then they will communicate with us and we will go ahead and check that all your roommates and suite mates are okay with you with living with an animal. 
And if not, we will take other steps to remedy that, but that is the process for that. So it all goes through the Disability Access Center, like you need approval for it. And I know some people had questions about pets. Um, anything you can have in the residence halls without having other accommodations is a 10 gallon with only fish in it. That's the only pet that's allowed unless you're going about registering a service animal or an ESA. I just wanted to clear that up for anybody that was confused. Thank you. Um, maybe while we wait for more questions about housing, we can and go back to that question that Maddie had answered originally, which is some what are some of our favorite things about Western. Um, Spencer, Chaya, do you all have a preference if like you really want to talk about something? I want to just touch on um, our professors. I have been really, really impressed with the professors I've had. Um, and one of the things that we kind of talk about is that the professors that we have are here to teach first and the research is their second priority. And I feel like that's super, that's been super true and really been reflected in my experience also, that I've had professors who are very invested and care a lot about um, their students learning. And it's been, it's been, it's been a very positive experience for me on that on that front and I feel like it's that's not true of everywhere and it's pretty cool that we have such uh, teaching focused and uh, yeah caring professors. I would say going off of Spen what Spencer said um, just don't underestimate the power of office hours because with classes sometimes you have a larger class size smaller depending on like what portion of your major you're in. As you get higher up, you're going to have smaller class amounts, but when you're in your more general GUR courses, which is like general university requirements, which all students have to do, you'll have like some bigger class sizes and great way to meet your professor and get assistance is to go to office hours. So try to do that and like put your name out there because that's a great way to connect later because you might have that professor again for a higher up course. And it can help you make connections, just like Spencer's doing research. Like these are the kind of avenues you need to take to be able to connect and to propel your future academic career as well. I'm actually yeah, to briefly to briefly touch on that too. The way that I got involved with this research that I'm doing is I went to my professor's office hours and I talked to them about the research that they had mentioned they were doing in class, and they said, "Oh, well, would you like to be a part of it?" And now here I am a part of it. So it, it truly, really, yeah, absolutely what Chaya said. It's, it can do a lot. Yeah. Um, I think for me real quick, before we answer this next housing question we got, some of my favorite things that I've encountered here at Western has actually been within my program. We have the opportunity to do practicums and practicums is essentially just um, because I wanna be a teacher, I get to go into the classroom in different schools here in Bellingham, particularly those elementary schools. And then I get to teach lessons or just um, shadow different teachers, see what their teaching style, like, style is like. Um, and then, I don't know, just like hang out with kids and things like that. So that's been super fun for me, but I also um, do really love the community that I found here at Western, specifically within the ESC um, and a few of the different clubs and things like that. So I do also though want to answer this question that we got about housing. So where can I find the prices based on which hall location I choose to live in? Um, someone has already sent in a link. So thank you so much, Nova, for sending that link. Um, however, I do just want to say that across campus, the pricing isn't going to change if you're like, depending on this, like the, the hall. So the only time you'll see some price differentiation is if you're in a single, a triple or a double, um, but a double is going to cost the same everywhere. Um, as far as I'm concerned. And Chaya, you can second that or add something else to that, but yeah. Yeah, Elizabeth, that's totally correct. So if anyone has any other questions about housing or dining, we are here until four. Um, however, if you think you've gotten all the information you're looking for, feel free to um, leave the Zoom. If you want to, you don't have to stay until four, but we are gonna be here for another um, 10 to 11 minutes. So 
ask any other questions you're wondering about. I can just add a little note, just assistance for incoming students, not related to housing, but when you come on campus, you're going to take part in registration for your courses. I was going to suggest just from my personal experience, don't be afraid to register for a class waitlist because you class waitlist is like where the total amount of students in a class has filled up and you add yourself on the waitlist that if people drop, you can get into that class. Don't underestimate that because you think you're new at Western. Don't be afraid to put your name in there because you never know if you can get into that class. I've had many times where I was able to get in when I didn't think I could. And I remember my first couple quarters, I never would do the wait list because afraid I wouldn't get in. But try it. Just try it when you register. I don't know if anybody else has had the same experience, so that was mine. Yeah, um, good advice, Chaya, thank you. So we still had another housing question, but I, I wanna ask y'all a question because I'm just kind of curious about dining. Um, did y'all have like a favorite meal or something that your dining hall served at whatever time? Like I know for living on the ridge, um, they always, every now and then they'd put out like chili, like I love chili and it was like really good. And it was a vegetarian chili, which was awesome because I'm, I say I'm like 95% vegetarian and like the rest is pescatarian because sometimes I do eat like salmon or shrimp. Um, but I really like that. But also on Saturdays, they always had like a really big breakfast. So they always had those like um, buttermilk biscuits and like eggs and some kind of potato. And I love a good breakfast. So yeah, those are kind of some of my favorite things to eat on in the dining halls. But I'm curious what y'all had like on North Cam Campus or Fairhaven or anything else. I 100% agree with Maddie about the waffle station. We had one of those in North Campus also, and I miss it so much. It was wonderful. Um, but that, that's one of my favorites. I also, I think it was every Saturday for late night, they had curly fries. And that was another of my favorites, was that I would sometimes go to dinner and then wait until late night so that I could have the curly fries on just one swipe. Again, yeah, waffle stand was awesome. I, I loved making my own little meals in the uh, dining hall um, when I was just feeling creative. I would, you know, I loved putting uh, the vanilla ice cream in coffee and making like an ice cream coffee float. Those were super good. Um, I also uh, would um, make like a toast where I would put, um, you know, uh, tomatoes from the salad bar and I'd put some olive oil that they had and some spices and, you know, just make myself like a really good kind of open faced sandwich. Warm cookie night was the best. Gotta love warm cookie night. I really do miss late night, um, especially on the weekends. It was super fun to get together with all your friends at late night in the dining hall until kind of closing and just kind of like, you know, eat those curly fries or warm cookies and talk about your week and stuff like that. I would on warm cookie night do kind of similarly. I'd take I'd get two cookies and I'd put ice cream in the middle and make an ice cream sandwich myself. Wonderful. Maybe this is like not super crazy, but I really like like the salad bar. Um, all of the locations have like great greens and I think Maddie spoke about this earlier, but that was one of my favorite parts because I always go in to get a salad and then also just a great place to go to hang out with friends is the dining hall and even like staying out late night and just having a great conversation. It can even be a study break because we all know we stay up late doing studying, so you might as well get some good cookies while you're at it. Definitely agree. Um, I do 
And I wonder, Chaya, if you would like know, but I know, so Maddie mentioned earlier, if like it's more recommended to get like a smaller meal plan as opposed to starting off with a bigger one because you can always increase throughout the quarter. But if you find yourself with a whole, like if you got a 125 meal plan and you find that you still have like 30 left by like your last week in that quarter um, or whatever, we also do have a swipe out hunger campaign where you can donate your meal plans to students who perhaps um, finished all their meals or some other student who's just looking to get something warm to eat um, while they're on campus. So that's definitely a good option um, as well if you find that you just got a meal plan that was far too big for you. Um, just donate those meals in the next quarter. You can lower your meal plan to fit better fit your needs, but yeah. Yeah, Elizabeth, that's great. Thanks for mentioning that. Just to add on to that, um, for downgrading your meal plan, since you can only do that through the second Friday off the quarter. So if you do end up with too many meals and you didn't downgrade by the deadline, always Swipe Out Hunger is a great option to give to other students or individuals who are really in need of meals. And then next quarter, you can always amend it if you found the previous quarter is too many meals for you. Something that um, I don't think we really mention on our tours often is the, out, uh, the Outback. So the Outback is a, kind of a student run um, garden area. And there's also like beehives and a chicken coop and things like that. Um, but I know like throughout the summer, they've been, you know, harvesting um, a lot of really great vegetables and they've made it, you know, free for students who want to come and pick up a bag of vegetables. Um, and that's, I believe that's continued on even until this month. Um, so again, if you are, you know, you're wanting some really great fresh veggies, you know, harvested like just hours prior, you can always go to the Outback Farm and see if they're offering. Um, that's also another thing. If you are, you do want to get involved in gardening, um, the Outback Center is really great. And another reason why I love Fairhaven, because it's right next to Fairhaven. <laughs> yeah, shout out to that farm. Sometimes they just had like a whole bunch of vegetables. And during the year, I know some, like when we would be um, working within the Office of Admissions, trying to get volunteers for these big event days when we had them on campus, like, the next post like next to us they'd be giving away little cups of like vegetables and literally the best carrots I've ever had in my entire life um, so truly if you're looking for some pretty awesome vegetables that are locally sourced and grown that's a great option but thanks Maddie for mentioning that um, we do have three more minutes though so again ask any question you're looking for that we can answer within that time but if you need to go feel free you don't have to stay until four um, but it's been such an awesome time answering these questions. But yeah, three more minutes, y'all. I would also mention if anybody has more housing related questions or dining related questions, you can almost e you can always email us and we can write this in the chat as well, but housing at WWU edu or you can call us at 360-650-6565 and we can include that in the chat so that you guys can reference that for later if you didn't have a question now and pops up in a week or so just feel free to contact us Uh, Chai, I loved what you were, you know, you were saying around giving like first year advice. There are definitely things I wish I knew when I was a first year. Um, and so for anyone who will be coming to Western, um, I highly recommend uh, taking general university requirement classes for majors you think you might want to go into one day. Um, it, you know, even if you don't go into that major, uh, you will still have fulfilled some sort of general university requirement 
Um, so for example, if you think you want to go into biology, definitely take that bio 101 because that is required for biology. Or um, I was, again, I was a design major and I was interested in design. So I took a art history class and that fulfilled the GUR. But I think it also increases your chances of getting into that major because they've seen you've already taken these classes that are required for the major and also fulfill um general university requirements so you know you know play with what you might want to do and take those gur classes and then you'll already be through the major a little bit and have that gur fulfilled all right well um thank you all so much for being here and for attending all of our virtual um events throughout today um we hope we have given you a little bit of a sense of what it's like to live here at western and just thank you all so much for coming um does anyone have else have any words anything else they'd like to say um other than also seconding that thank you um definitely we put in those resources for the email and the phone number for those housing. If you have any questions like Chaya said that come up in a week or two or whatever, and you want to ask, definitely use that. But thank you so much again, as Maddie said, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening.